Hello there. It's been a while since we had a face-to-face. -face. There's good reason for that. Primarily being I moved. And so I've been working out of a different space uh, and slowly setting up this space for um, the channel. And uh, it's, it's I will say it's a smaller, much smaller space, but it is somewhere where I can uh, shut the door and, uh, and make noise and it's not too big of a deal. Um, so yeah. But today is an Ask IG episode. So it's kind of a and a situation where I just get to fill you in with some stuff and, uh, and see how we go from there. So, um, so there's a bunch of questions um, that you guys had on uh, response to a story post that I put on YouTube for the first time and also um, just a stock standard community post. So I'll talk to the ones in the story first um, and, uh, and we'll just smash out as many of these as we possibly can. I've got my tea, I've got my... Actually, real quick. Okay, so at the moment, what I've decided is that um, the, the laptop that I've been using for the last couple of months, um, the Yoga 730 is still the one running the show. At the moment, I've managed to get my bigger desk in here, get some LED strip lighting on the, the edge, the back edge of the desk. And, uh, and that is by Blitzwolf as well. So, um, and uh, they, they were kind enough to send that to me. So there's a link for that down below. Uh, but it's, it's very easy to set up just, you know, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth kind of scenario. And uh, yep, you know, app on the phone and you can control it. And then just the standard Pixar lamp that I've always had and uh, some headphones and yeah, that's about it. It's pretty minimal really. And I've got the mic just sitting here. You can see it in the frame. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna tweak it a little bit as we go to try and improve acoustics and things like that. But that's what we're working with right now. So like it or lump it, this, this is what we're stuck with. Okay, here we go, question time. So um, Luke Allen, what's your favorite desktop environment right now? Gnome. It just says keyboard driven interface. I dig it. Um, uh, Mangesh asks, I'm new to Linux, moved away from Windows to Linux, Fedora 30, good choice, recently and it works great, but I feel like I'm not using Linux to its full capacity. Any suggestions? Uh, yes, take some time to get to learn how different interfaces work. Uh, the biggest, the best thing that I ever did was to spend some time looking up tutorial videos on GNOME and KDE or whatever it is that you're using. Um, and figure out how to be the most productive that you want to be on it. Don't necessarily buy into uh, everything that the distribution is selling you in terms of how you should use the distro. You should be trying to adapt the distro to use your needs, but there's a middle ground there where um, you kind of have to learn the computer's language and also then you want to make the computer adapt to you, if that makes sense. Moving right along, uh, what distro slash desktop environment um, at the moment I am using Zorin 15 because that's what I'm testing at the moment. But prior to that, and probably for the longest, it's been Fedora 29, then Fedora 30. Uh, how old are you? And I'm married. How old are you? That's a rude question. No, I'm kidding. I'm 27. And am I married? Yes, I am married. That's probably why you see a wedding ring show up occasionally in a video. That's kind of what that means. Um, yes, grandpa. That means nothing. Okay. Do you get sick of all the Linux reaction videos? Yes and no. I am a Linux video creator, so in part I help perpetuate this cycle, but I try not to weigh in on things unless I've got something positive to add to the space. I'm not gonna jump on a bandwagon just to rant about it because the internet likes ranting. And I don't necessarily like ranting. In real life maybe, but not online. Um, okay, so if we move to the questions that were in the uh, community posts, Okay, Maxwell asks, are you into Nextcloud? Why slash why not? What is your favorite distro for newer packages and GNOME and newer packages that in KDE and Plasma? I use NVIDIA, so Fedora isn't ideal. Uh, okay, so I'll just pick those part one at a time. I'll focus on the Nextcloud one. At the moment, I do not use Nextcloud, but I feel like that's going to change. Uh, at the moment, I am working on a project where I am trying to migrate a bit of my dependence on Google and its services. Uh, away to something a little bit more independent where I still own the stuff that I'm using. Um, so with the help of Plex and Synology, I'm slowly migrating my music uh, playing habits over to something that's, uh, that's running on a network attached storage. Um, but I guess progressing on from that, I'm interested into looking into uh, utilizing something like Nextcloud on network attached storage to try and get my own cloud storage going that I can access files and invoices and that kind of thing. This is a good one from, uh, from Gitellen. 
Uh, when Ubuntu and Mint are discussed, people often focus on Unity slash GNOME slash Cinnamon. Leads me as a non-user to have two questions. How much identity beneath the GUI do the common distros actually have? Why are people mainly focusing on exchangeable polish when looking at the Ubuntu family, although Ubuntu is well used in servers and thus presumably has something to offer under the hood? True. Honestly, a lot of Linux distributions share the same underlying core and it's, and it's decisions based on the development team and what their goals are as to what they're going to prioritize in a particular system. So some systems want to focus on having a system that can upgrade very easily and thus the dependencies between different layers of, of the operating system are, are very uh, movable so that you don't necessarily break your whole system if an update goes south. Things like rolling releases or uh, server releases that uh, that want to stay up to date are going to prioritize this. Whereas other distributions, let's say Ubuntu, are going to try and focus on providing the most absolute, stable, well-tested uh, stuff, especially the long-term support releases, so that servers can run reliably. Um, so when it comes to what are the main differences, that's like a whole nother that's a whole nother video, but. Um, oftentimes we tend to focus on what's on the surface level because that is the most no noticeable and when it comes to user preference that's what people have the most opinions about. That's probably why we make videos based on the surface level stuff more than what differs under the hood because as it presents itself to the user there's usually not a whole lot of difference. Lucas asks would you set up a NAS and automated backups of your machines? Answer is yes. At the moment it's the Synology drive, the, the DS uh, 218 plus um, and Deja Dupe. That's really all I've got going on right now. That may change, but that's what started at the moment. Isaac Ratcliffe asks, uh, what are your top five IG videos to make? Why is Firefox so good as a browser? Top five. I've got to say number one, uh, one of the most fun videos that I had recently to make was the interview that I did with Alicad about Akira. Um, and I'd love to be able to do more of those IG talks in the very near future. And I'm hopefully going to be doing one with the creator of Zorin OS in the very near future. So being able to talk about nerdy stuff and make a video about that, that's always fun. Um, other videos that I've had fun making are usually comparison videos. Um, they also usually do fairly well for the channel as well, but comparing uh, this or that, people on the internet seem to dig that stuff. So I enjoy kind of coming up with compelling points to compare thing A to thing B, whether it's uh, operating systems or music players or that kind of thing. So I would say the series that I probably got the most enjoyment out of personally was the best of series where I broke down a list of all of the best applications in different categories. So that those would probably be among my top five videos to make. Okay, so there's also a couple of questions related to Firefox as a web browser. Actually, a few questions, including the second part of Isaac's question about um, Firefox as a web browser. Yep, same space, different day, different jumper, different hair, different OS. Moving on. Path asks, why does Linux come with Firefox? And Stuart asks, do you have a preferred web browser? And if so, which one? So uh, Firefox in a lot of ways is representative of a lot of the same values that the free and open source community have in terms of it being developed in an open source way so that anybody can access the code. Um, and also it is relatively, uh, it is relatively privacy respecting compared to a browser like Google Chrome where um, it's made by an a, a, it's made by a company that does ads for a living and the better that they can target those ads to the people that are using the web browser the better um, the, you know the more click through they will get on those ads so it seems a little bit counterintuitive to then for that same company to then offer a web browser to everyone so that they can do that better because ultimately they're trying to serve their shareholders so that's why when you've got a browser like Firefox that generally tries to champion privacy and tries to respect users data and gives them built-in tools and things that they can use to stop different websites sniffing their trail then usually people that use Linux enjoy that kind of thing because that's probably one of the reasons that drew them to Linux in the first place. Now if you asked me five years ago about the same question I probably would have recommended something else like Chromium the open source version of Google Chrome but nowadays Firefox has just got such a strong use case in terms of how efficient it is the fact that it has synchronization across different browsers and different platforms and its performance is on par, if not better than uh, Chrome. So it just kind of ticks all the right boxes. Ronald asks, coming off of Windows 10, what is the most adaptable Linux version to start with? 
I would honestly say Zorin. Like, go look up Zorin OS 15 and, uh, and just download the core edition and that'll probably be good for you. Toby asks, what are your top five productivity slash goal apps? Um, I don't know, I'd say the ones that I use most often and they don't even necessarily uh, limited to sort of Linux type stuff either. Probably the ones that I use the most are Simple Note. I use that an awful lot, uh, scripts, notes, um, all kinds of stuff goes in and out of Simple Note. It's exactly what it says, it's just simple note taking and it syncs across everything, so that's nice. Um, the other one would be a Pomodoro timer. So, and again, there's apps that are on every different platform that kind of cover this. If you just search Pomodoro timer, there'll probably be an app for it. The Pomodoro technique is where you take 25 minutes of work, pick one thing to work on for 25 minutes, you get a five minute break, and then do that again a couple times, then you get a longer break. Um, that's been a real big productivity boon for me. In terms of like keeping track of tasks and projects, I've kind of bumped between a bunch of different things from Trello to Microsoft To Do to Google Tasks to just a simple to-do list on Simple Note, and I haven't really landed on any one particular thing. I kind of, they all have pros and cons, and I kind of use them all interchangeably depending on how I'm feeling, which isn't great. So I should probably try and tighten that up. Then the only other thing that I would recommend, which really only gets us to four, is uh, is cloud storage. Like I, um, the, the pros of having a decent cloud storage setup where everything just goes by default, everything that you're working on just means that you never lose any progress on anything and you can pick up whatever you want to keep doing in wherever you are, whatever machine you're using. And because I've got a few different machines that I use, that's really helpful. So, you know, you can go find a good cloud storage solution that works for you and use that. Timothy asks, as a designer, knowing that Linux desktop isn't exactly industry accepted, what distro should freelance graphics slash web designers focus on if wanting to make the switch? My guess is Ubuntu and Kubuntu LTS because of the AMD GPU Pro support and generally stable productivity slash design apps. Um, would you include Fedora or others? Honestly, um, I, again, I have learned to be relatively versatile in terms of the tools that I use, but I am not a graphic designer or web designer or anything like that. So what I would say is um, go and check out a project like Ubuntu Studio and look up the LTS release of that. Um, and the reason why I say that is that there's, there's a couple of, of different projects. And if I remember, I'll try to put links in the description. Um, but there are a couple of different projects and uh, artists, for example, that record their albums, do all the graphic design, do all the mixing, mastering, and all that kind of stuff through a distro like Ubuntu Studio, which I think is really impressive. And when it comes to web design and that kind of thing, I actually don't know how well a distro like that would cater to you. But um, Ubuntu Studio kind of pulls together all the things that would be important to creative professionals and tries to package it up in one you know, distro that's ready to install. Um, and hopefully stability, efficient system use, and um, and all of the kind of best programs and stuff are already loaded onto that. So I recommend you check that out if you haven't already. All right, well, I reckon that about does it for this episode. We've already dragged on long enough. Um, so hope you enjoyed it. Let, let me know, like keep asking questions down in the comments and I'll try and save them for the next one. Use the hashtag, because it just makes it easier for me to find them. And uh, yeah, we will leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.